Now, he's been moaning at me off air saying, you missed out a couple of books. I'm sorry. No, I didn't. Mo- I wasn't moaning. I just, uh, yeah, I wasn't moaning. I just, uh, when you read out the original list, I was like, oh, hang on a moment. Isn't that a bit short? But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You've got the important ones in there. Yeah. That's the most There's important There's lots thing. and lots of books he's written, fiction and Seven. non-fiction. Seven books Seven. now. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about the new one, which is My Girlfriend's Perfect Ex-Boyfriend, which yes. is a work of fiction. Yes. Uh, so tell us about uh, the characters in the book and why you got the idea. Uh, shall I tell you? Okay, shall I tell you the idea? Oh, this could get me into trouble. Um, well, well, you've mentioned Valerie already, haven't you? So, uh, well, me and Val, we uh, we've known each other for quite a while. But uh, three years ago, you know that I came out of a relationship, and uh, my first thought was uh, to contact Val because uh, we used to go to theatre together and that sort of thing beforehand, and um, we hadn't seen each other or contacted each other for quite a while. So I sort of um, sent her a message on, you know, Facebook. Hello. What, yeah. just like the weird message you said not just to send? Just like you. Did. Well, we we were still <laughs> Facebook friends. Oh, we were friends already. So, That's okay. Go on. So I sent her a message out of the blue and said, "Look, I've got two tickets." to the theatre, uh, would you like to come? You know, Val said to me, well, uh, okay then, mm. all right then, because, um, yeah, as you got the tickets, no problem at all, yeah, let's let's go. So I put, um, yeah, uh, this was over the phone actually, so I put the phone down and thought, well, I'd better go buy those tickets. <gasps> so off oh. we went. <laughs> anyway, that was the start, three years later, and uh, we're still together. Val herself, she'd also come out of a long-term relationship with, um, with somebody, mm-hmm. um, Let's call him Steve. Okay. And uh, it was an amicable split. Okay. Yeah. And you, so you know what it's like if you've ever had an amicable split. You know, that person is, she, they were still friends. Yeah, so yeah. she used to mention Steve quite a bit. Uh, she, I'd say things like, are you coming around to the weekend? She'd say, yeah, yeah. And I'd say, I've baked some bread, some fresh bread. And she'd say, <laughs> she'd say to me, uh, oh, Steve used to make bread as well, mm. uh, you know, with flour that he milled himself. Yeah. Uh, using a stone that he dug out the foundations whilst he was building his own house by mm. hand, that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, one day I said, I said, if you don't stop talking about Steve, mm. I'm going to put him in a novel and uh, kill him off. And uh, Val said to me, what would you call the novel? Would you call it My Girlfriend's Perfect Ex-Boyfriend? And I was like, oh, that. That's just brilliant. What a fantastic title. And she looked at me and said, no, no, you cannot. You cannot write a book about Steve and you cannot call it my girlfriend's perfect ex-boyfriend. But this was Friday evening. Yeah. Okay. And this is how it was. And I think it's the same for all writers out there. Uh, you tend to discuss the book you're working on with your partner. You know, you, you work through ideas. And so by the end of the weekend, we had renamed Steve and called him Sebastian. Yeah. And we'd made him really obnoxious and horrible. And, <laughs> and we decided that the book was going to be about a school teacher called Adrian mm. and uh, that he had a partner called Paige, who's an American, and she worked in PR, coincidentally. And uh, I started writing My Girlfriend's Perfect Ex-Boyfriend. And, and the more I wrote it, the funnier it got and the more I was enjoying it. And I thought this one's a real winner. And so there we go. There we go. Ten months later, My Girlfriend's Ex-Boyfriend. And I really hope Steve isn't listening to this show. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got very good reviews as well. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be. Yeah, it seems to be sort of garnering some lovely reviews, and so that's nice. Yeah. And I like it. It's fizzled, but this will be going in the bath with me. Sorry if that sounds a bit peculiar. Yeah, all my books go in the bath. They with do. You. I know. They're just, just laying in the water with yeah. me. So, um, I will be reading this. So it's Aiden Turner, mountaineer, secret agent, fireman. Oh, I say. <laughs> Ooh, you're safe. reading the you're reading the blurb in your head on air. I am a real page turner. Really enjoyed this book and devoured the lot in one sitting. Funny, romantic, and a bit crazy. Highly recommended. Yeah. How oh, nice. I that? know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's going well. Do, what do you think of the cover? Do you like that? I like the cover. It's very, very good. I do yeah, like the cover. Well, very sixties inspired. Yeah, well, that, that that's about like the tenth version of the cover because mm. um, uh, I wrote a blog post about this the other day, and we went through so many different versions of the cover, and in the end, we ended up with two covers: one which men liked and one which women liked, mm. and we had to go for that one. It is really the thing is with books. It's one of those things when I go to a book because I love walking around Waterstones and I, I love going into bookshops, yeah. believe it or not, and. And uh, it is, book covers are so important yeah, for yeah, getting the attention. Yeah, yeah. The old, uh, the, uh, the, the old sort of like never judge a book by its cover. Mm. That's advice that's universally <laughs> ignored by everybody. <laughs> everybody yeah. judges a book by the, by the cover. You know the cover's what? the most important thing. And then the next important thing is the title. Yes. And the word that jumps out yeah. as soon as you look at it is perfect. Yeah. Which is in pink. 
I thought we'd got to a cover design. Mm. And then um, one of the things that's happened since I last saw you is I've joined the Romantic Novelists Association, mm. okay, which is a big organisation, and mm. there's only about four men in it, of which I'm one. <laughs> and they have chapters all over the country. And so I sent the final design to the Chelmsford chapter of the Romantic Novelists Association and said, you know, ladies, can you have a quick look at this cover and see and see what you think of it and i thought they'd all come back and go oh love that cover and they all said oh hate it absolutely hate it <laughs> nice bit of support. and they told yeah i know they told me all the reasons why i didn't like the color didn't like the smile on the man's face or so i had to take all those ideas away and have it reworked and mm. um and eventually came up with uh, this cover which um which was weird because all my male friends liked the cover that i picked yeah but my girlfriend and uh, all my female friends preferred that cover. And yeah. because 90% of my readers are female, yeah. I have to go with that cover. Is the guy in the story a bit of you, not so much the ex-boyfriend, is the you main character? Adrian. Adrian, is he based on you? Uh, of all the characters I've written so far, this is probably the one that is least like me. Mm. Um, because he's a... I really like Adrian. He's a school mm. teacher. And he's not very self-confident um, with his girlfriend. Because his girlfriend is this stunning, lovely, you know, high-powered sort of like a very feisty American lady mm. and he, he feels sort of like slightly inferior it's not very good in you know he's, he's, very, he's not very self-confident but he is confident when he's in school and mm. when he's teaching and he strikes up this rather lovely friendship with a 15 year old student who's in need of a father figure yeah. and he was a, quite a complicated but really I really warmed to Adrian the more I wrote, wrote him really. So who in your opinion would play the lead characters who plays Watson out in the um, TV show um, oh, Sherlock yeah. uh, it's played by Martin Freeman Martin Freeman right okay yeah he would be brilliant and who is going to be playing Paige uh, well, originally, I thought it would be um, the lady who used to play Cuddy in House. Do you remember House MD, the TV show, um, the Doctor Ooh. and all that sort of stuff? Oh, yeah. um, but more recently, I think there's an actress called Lake Bell, mm -hmm. and uh, she would be perfect. She would be absolutely one. I've seen her in a couple of movies, and she would be hilarious and funny. So the book is out now. You can get it in hardback from... Uh, well, it's not in hardback. It's only in paperback. Paperback. Well, I don't. To me, it's hard, and if it hit you on the head, bit, you still feel it. <laughs> oh, sorry, I mean, say paperback. Amazon hardback, yeah. is probably your best bet for yeah. uh, for uh, both the paperback and the ebook. Thank you very much to Peter Jones. It's You're been lovely welcome. to see you. Thank you very much for the biscuits. And if you can find out more about Peter Jones at peterjonesauthor.com.com. Thanks very much, Peter. Lovely.